and plate work and plate feature. So we're going to put in, we're going to create some plate. We're going to modify those plates, create some holes, and the, that sort of things. On the third day, we uh, we're going to create. Uh, we're going to we're going to make connections uh, using connection vault and verification tools. How different ob uh, different uh, objects are connected to each other uh, if they're in this if they are connecting the shop or on the site. Uh, clash checking. Uh, Copy a connection. Uh, on, the f on the fourth day, we're going to see bracing connection and some other advanced uh, connections and tools. And uh, on the fifth day, we're going to see Project Explore, how to create different views and how to flip between them. User section and stair, railing, and advanced connection. Uh, Nick, uh, uh, on the sixth day, it's going to be our uh, second week, we start making with drawings. So we're going to have one week for modeling. And uh, the second week, we're going to start making with drawings. So output tab, numbering, how to create main part and single part drawings. Uh, document manager, how to, how to manage document when we have them created. And uh, on the seventh day, we're going to see how to attach and detach drawings from model. Uh, prototypes editing. And prototypes is actually uh, we're gonna modify your uh, default prototypes used by Ben Steel to 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 replace them with your uh, title block and the company title blocks. A revision control and drawing editing, just everything related to drawings. Creating lists. On the eighth day, uh, BOM editing and stair drawing, NC files. Uh, ninth, uh, on the ninth day, we're going to see direction drawings uh, using camera, uh, ISO views, and uh, some relation drawings. And finally, the last day would be uh, uh, review the, the whole topic. And finally, we're going to see Great Tech Advanced Manager, uh, which is where we actually modify and customize advanced team. All right, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, any trouble working with advanced team during training, you can send your questions to support at uh, onetechno.com. So if you guys have Skype installed on your machine, you can add my Skype, which is support one, techno three. So it's pretty easy. It's easier on Skype because we can share the screens. So you want us to send uh, questions to the email address yeah. um, dur during or after? Both. OK. Okay, so for example, you, we, we have a lesson today, okay, and you go home to practice and you have some questions. So you can send your questions right away to support at bottech.com or you can ask your questions the day after that. So let's say tomorrow. If you have some questions today, you can ask them tomorrow. Tomorrow morning before I start my when you topic, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you guys if you have any questions or not. So, but later on, if you if you have any questions, you can send it to to support, and you can call at eight five five four seven two four eight thirty two. So I'm gonna.
start. Uh, oh, you can't. Advanced oh, steel. So oh, click on advanced steel. I restarted already. Yeah, thanks. Bye. So you're going to be asked to to select one of these options. So standalone version and on top of AutoCAD. So we're going to pick the, the first one, standalone. All right, so. All right, I'm going to start my new project, my new job. Click on new, imperial and metric. I go for imperial one, double click on that. All right, so this is advanced steel interface. What you have uh, by default on your site. So we call this a uh, tool palette in advanced steel. It's pretty handy. If you close it by mistake, you can call it up by going on View, Tab, and click on Tool Palette. All right, so I'm going to put it right here. We're going to see that. So we got uh, Home Tab, Objects Tab, Extended Modeling, some other tabs. We're going to see them, most of them. So the you... Okay. Uh, you've obviously um, modified those because that's not what I see on my screen. Okay. Hold on a second. Who well, am I speaking to? This is Dave. Yeah. So when I go to view, I have pictures of things, and I have to put my icon right on it, like rectangular plate two points. <laughs> Want me to hit show my screen? Yeah, just click on uh, just accept my request. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go to to view tab. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Just click gotcha. on tool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna make myself presentable again. All right, so I'm going to change my name. All right, so OK, so uh, we're going to see these uh, different tools we have out output tab view labels and dimensions we're going to see them and um, we're going to start uh, uh, with the uh, grid okay on the objects tab and uh, another thing here is uh, this UCS all right this UCS is uh, uh, but is on world right, right now by default so I, I've got my X and Y and my Z is up, so this is the default location of UCS. We're going to see how to change that UCS because we, we work with this UCS quite a bit. Uh, tomorrow we're going to see that, but at the moment just to have an idea. Okay, so I'm going to start with this objects tab and with this grid tool. All right, so we've got two uh, main commands here: building grid and uh, and grid by distance. All right, first I'm gonna use this one, building grid, and the difference between these two items is that if I use building grid, I need I can create uh, axes which are square like two by two, four by four, something which are equal actually, right? 
So I cannot specify the distance and spacing between my uh, my grids when I wanna when I put in those grids. So we're gonna see that. I show you what I mean by that. Click on that. Uh, I need to specify my first point, which is zero and zero. Uh, which is kind of going to be here. All right. So I've got my cursor like here, and I need to specify my my second point on the command uh, on the command line. So for for second point, you can put your entire value. For example, I have got 50 feet length by 40 feet width. All right, this is going this is going to be my my entire grid, right? I do enter. So I've got 50 here and 40 on in y direction because the first one you put is going to be x the second one is going to be y all right so this is the grid I just put in if I want to do an orbit I press down my my shift key and use my middle button of your uh, of my mouse all right so I've got my uh, my my grid put in. I wanna I wanna modify that. So I double click on that. First of all, I've got two different groups. One group here in x direction, in y direction, and the other one on uh, x direction. So you've got two individual groups. All right. So I'm gonna modify this one here. Parallel with the uh, by. When I double click on that, it brings up this little box. So in advanced steel, you, we, we don't have lines anymore. So you're going to deal with objects, all right? So and to modify any to modify an, an object in advanced steel, you just need to double click on the object, whether it's a beam or it's a column or grid line, doesn't matter. Just double click on that and you're gonna get the dialog box related to that uh, object. So I've got this uh, dialog box brings up. So uh, I've got this automatic label check. It's pretty important here. We're gonna see why. Leave it check. Don't, don't change it here. Under label type, we have numbers and small and capital letters. Change it. You can see just my my x uh, axes are changed right now because uh, we have two groups. All right. So capital letters, numbers. So I'm going to put it to capital letters. I'm going to next tab, which is group. All right, it's going to uh, tell you how many grids you have, number of your grids, and distance, and spacing between your, grip, your grids, your axis. Don't change anything here at the moment. Single axis. Under single axis, you can change the, the, name of, the name of axis individually. But you need to have this one unchecked. All right? So if I, if, if instead of, a, I want to have something else, like A1 or something, all right? I can uncheck this box, go back here, and put something like A1, and do Enter, all right? It works only if you have this one unchecked. All right, so... Uh, see... Secondary axis, side one and side two. So what it does is, if I check this this box, side one, it's it's going to create a secondary axis next to my highlighted, not highlighted because I've got them all not yet 
highlighted uh, axis, which is showing up right here. So A, if I want to do the same thing for B, I need to go to B. And I can do the same thing. All right. Go back to my A axis. So here I, uh, I've got this one checked. I can change the, the, the spacing. Instead of 2 inches, I can put 5 inches. And for its name, for prefix, I can put something like A1. All right, so don't worry about the, the text high. If you type REG for regenerate, all right, you're going to get them all with the same height and with the same size. All right, so I'm going to go back to my... Uh, uh, not here, but here. I'm going to uh -huh, this was number right here. Single axis. I'm going to uncheck this one here. So, so group, under group, we're going to see how to change the spacing between, uh, between axes, but at the moment, don't change the distance between, uh, don't change that distance here. This is not how it works. All right, so single axis and display type. So this display type is, is important because it's going to affect the way uh, we modify and we we move and we change the, the spacing between axes. At the moment, I have the I have a standard standard check, so it means that if I select my my group of axes, all right, you can see I've got just on my first and my last axis. I, I, these groups. So if I want to have these groups, these groups actually enable you to to move and to change the the, pos the position of your axis. So if you want to have them here for each axis, you need to change the presentation here on the display type, change it to single axis. All right. So what it does is now I've got these groups on each axis. Now I can move them around, I can change the distance, and I can modify them. So if I if I want to modify, let's say, this spacing here, all right, I want to change this spacing, I want to move this three axis by five feet for example, towards uh, number two. What I need to do is I need to select. I need to pick the middle one. All right. Now I can move it around. So I put a value like five feet and enter. So you can see now I've got this one here. Move. So, again, five feet, go to the previous position and location, right? So, the same thing for the other side, single axis and standard. Now I've got that on standard, so that's why I cannot move these middle ones individually. All right, any questions? Um, why would you, why, I don't know, why would you ever want standard selected? 
Why would you never want the option to move your middle grids? Well, it's uh, it depends on. It's just a question of your preferences. It's uh, you can change it here to standard or single axis if you wanted to. Okay, the 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 difference between standard and single axis. Okay, if it's on single axis, you know how to modify that. But if it's on the standard, what you can do is let me show you. Okay, it's on single single axis. So what you can do is now is, for example, if I want to add another axis on the on the right hand side here, all right. If I take this, if I go towards the direction that I want, there's nothing happening. Okay, so, but if I have standard, if I select this standard one, if I do the same thing, it's gonna copy my grid by by the default value that that I have here on uh, on actually on uh, on group tab by 16 feet and 8 inches. Okay. So that's just the, the advantage of. That's stuff. just four equal spaces at 40 feet. Exactly. Or three, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but. Okay. The, the another, another thing that you can see on a standard is that uh, uh, I think too much. I think that's the only advantage of standard, and uh, so you can just uh, change it to to single axis if you want to move move them around. Mm -hmm. All right. So another thing here is. Uh, how to modify these uh, these uh, axes? How to delete them? How to trim and extend them? For example, if I have this one here, if I all right, if I have this one like this, if I want to extend this axis to my A axis, I can use this command here: extend axis. Click on that. It's going to ask me to select the, the boundary object, which is this A axis, enter, select this one. It's going to uh, extend my, my axis to, to the boundary. The other thing is, uh, okay, now how to trim that, the same thing, just different command. Select the command, so trim and extend. So select the command, select the, the boundary, enter, and pick the axis you want to trim. All right, so we've got add axis and delete axis. So let's say I want to add another axis uh, on the right-hand side of my uh, number four axis so what I need to do is just click on add add axis pick the axis that I want to add another one next to it okay and number of axis take a look at the command line ask for the number of axis I put one enter distance between axis uh, I put 10 feet All right, and I do enter. So it's going to add this one here, and it's going to rename the axis automatically. It's going to recognize that it's the number five. All right, to delete that, it's now part of the axis, part of my group. Right? If I if I want to delete this, I need to use this command. Because if I pick this and hit delete, it's going to delete all of them. All right? So to delete uh, these axes, you can just select this command, 
and select the one you want to delete. Enter. All right, so uh, now let's take a look at the other one, the other command here, which is greet by groups by distance. I'm going to delete my, my grid, my axis. Now, to use this, uh, the, the difference between this command and the building grid is that you can specify the spacing between your axes when you put in uh, those axes, right? So click on that, start point, 0 and 0. So my end point, my end point is going to be the, the point that my entire group will be finished there. So I put, let's say, 50 feet. Oops. Enter. Direction of the group, I, I want to go, I have two options, to positive direction, go to negative direction, I go to positive direction, enter. So I've got my first axis put in. I'm still on the command because on the command line, it's asking me my, my spacing. I put 15 feet, enter. So it's not going to show you the, the grid line that you just created here because it's going to ask you all of, the, all of your spacing and it's going to create them all together like a group, right? So you need to put the, those values, the spacing between your axes, but don't worry about that. It's not going to show you at the moment, but once you hit enter, it's going to create them all at once. So. I put, let's say, 12, enter, and 20 feet, enter. So if I'm happy with that, I can just press enter, and, it's, and it brings up the, the same dollar box. So, so I've got 15, 12, and 20. Yep. All right? So if you want to specify the the spacing between your axes at the moment when you put them in, you need to use this command which you, because it's, uh, it, it allows you to, to do that. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Click on the command, all right? So my first point, I can put 0 and 0, or I can just pick this one here, the end of my uh, my other axis. So take a look at the command line for my end point. For this direction, we put uh, 50, 50 feet because we didn't have any, uh, any reference point. But, at the, but in this situation, we have this reference point, which is the end of uh, our grid. Click on that. Direction of the group can go towards positive or negative direction, go towards positive direction, enter. So I've got my first, uh, my first uh, axis put in, but I'm still in the command. So I've got 50 feet here, so I, I want to split it uh, like, uh, uh, let's say, 20. Enter, 50, enter, and another 50, 15 feet. So I've got 20 feet and two 15 feet, right? Enter. It brings up this dollar box. I'm going to change it to capital letters. So capital letters and numbers. So to modify the 
these individual groups, you can do the same thing as we saw we saw together for for billing grids. It's exactly the same thing, and you can just change it to single axis and move them individually. All right. So another thing that I want to show you is. Uh, uh, this one here, this command, single axis. And this single axis is uh, used when you want to create a create a create an individual axis which which is not part of these groups. Alright, so let's say you have a diagonal axis here from this point to right here. So to create that, you need to create a reference line. So I'm going to create a line by five feet or something like this, depending on your geometry. I've got this five feet line. I'm going to change its color something better. All right. So, so I want to create a grid from this point to this point, or you can create another 10 feet or something like here, but I'm just going to create between this point and this point. To do that, I choose the command. Take a look at the command line for the first point. Start my first point. Go for the uh, next point. If I want to select this end point here, because I don't have my end point activated, right? So I type END for endpoint and do enter. So I can now I'm I'm able to, to pick this point. So we're gonna see how to how to change the the snaps, but at the moment just click and it brings up the same dollar box, but this 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 is a sing this is a single axis, this is an individual axis. So it's not going to follow the same pattern that you selected for for your name, for your act, for your group name here, like A, B, C, D. So you've got one here. So you need to change that manually. So automatic label and change it here manually, like A1 or something like this. All right. So that's how you can create uh, grids. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. So now, now let's take a look at uh, OS Snap settings that we have here. Settings. So to a uh, question for you guys. Are you guys familiar with, uh, with AutoCAD? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm going to talk about. I'm going to explain you this OS Snap setting. Uh, it's gonna. It's gonna give you. Okay, we're gonna see that. Let's snap setting, click on, right click on that and go to settings. So we've got endpoint, uh, perpendicular, many different types of snaps. So in advanced D, I want you guys to just have this one checked. Just note, right? Check this one here and uncheck the other OS snaps because uh, when we work on 3D, it's, uh, there's a big chance that you pick a wrong, uh, a wrong way snap when you want to pick a point or an object, and if you got all of these snaps checked. So just check this one here and click on OK at the moment. All right. The other thing you need to check here is silhouette snap under, under this tab. Check this grid intersection. All right, so grid intersection and object snaps. Have them check. Click OK. All right, so I'm going to now 
put in some uh, some some piece of steel. Start with uh, uh, with this eye roll section. All right. I'm gonna give you some time to to do what I'm doing right now, but at the moment, just wanna. Uh, start this little new topic and then I give you a couple of minutes to, to practice and then I'm gonna fill it between your screens to see how everybody's doing. All right? So roll section, click on that. I'm gonna put in my, my column. Alright? First of all, click on this fillet out next to the I roll section and you have a bunch of different sections. It's channel, I section, angle, T section, everything. So I'm gonna pick this rolled section, I section, click on that, all right? And I have to specify my start point. I wanna put in a column here. Click on that. Now I've got my cursor here. You can see, I can and move it around. So I go here uh, towards the direction that I want and put my column height, which is 10 feet. All right? I do enter. It brings up this box, this dollar box. I'm going to close it for at the moment. Just going to zoom in to see what, what I have. All right? This is the column I just put in at 10 feet column. So now I'm going to show you this presentation type and presentation mode that we have here. We have 2D wireframe, we have just wireframe, we have hidden, which is something like this, and finally we have realistic. All right. Conceptual is, in this case, it doesn't make any difference, but. So I'm going to change it to 2D wireframe. So the reason why I wanted you to uncheck those snaps is that if I want to create a beam, let's. Okay, let, before I do that, let me put in another column. If I want to create a beam between my two between my two columns, I'm going to mute you guys. Between my two columns, all right. I uh, if, at the moment I have just this no check, right? So if I come in here and uh, on my eye, se eye section and pick this point. If I, even if I zoom out, I'm pretty sure that I have just one snap point to, to pick, right? So I, I, I don't need to zoom in on my uh, section to, to pick the point, to pick the right point, because I, I've got just this node activated, right? But if I have this end point and midpoint checked, if I do the same thing, you can see I've got many points and many uh, corners to pick. So at least I've got uh, it's a 3D ob it's it's a 3D object. So I've got one, two, I've got a lot. So that's why I want you guys to uncheck this uh, midpoint and other snaps and just check this note because it's easier and it's going to reduce the the risk of making mistakes all right i'm going to un uh, unmute you guys again all right so we just saw uh, how to put in a column. It, we haven't run through uh, the dollar box yet. So to 
to modify these these columns. All right. We know just we just know that this is a 10 feet column. We we don't know anything else. So to modify this column, to change the section size, to to change the member size and data parameters, just double click on that, brings up this box. It's an as it's an object, it's an advanced steel object, you can just double click on that and you get the same thing. Like grids. Right? So under section, I've got eye section, angle, channel, anything. You can select uh, the type of sections, the type of member, members you want. Select the code, the category, and select the section. Sections, member size. All right. So if you, the is, let's say if you, if you know that your section is W12 by 22, you can just click here, all right, and instead of doing, uh, uh, Instead of changing, cha instead of changing these member size, uh, we need dollar bars. You can just put type of value like 22 or WA, W18 by uh, 26 by 12. It doesn't change a lot. Double twelve by twelve. It doesn't exist. Twelve, probably twenty-six. Yes. If it if it doesn't exist within the sec, within the uh, the library, it's not going to change. But if if it exists there, you it's going to change the your section. All right, so again, click on that. Brings up this other box, so you can change the member size, the material. The same thing for material. All right, coding. Pick one of these guys. Positioning. I'm going to zoom in here to show you what it does. I've got this. Uh, uh, this red line is called system line advanced steel. And we have this red line in all of advanced steel objects. All right? So it's going to specify the position of the member. So it, repre it, it actually represents the, uh, the, 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 the member axis, we can say. All right? So you can play with this, you see how the position of the member is changing. You can rotate your, your column, your beam, by 90 degree. You can put a value here, like 45, all right? So, uh, this, these two, uh, these Y and Z offsets are used to 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 create a, uh, to create an offset between the call the, the member and the system line. So we're gonna see. Sometimes it it becomes handy, but at the moment, just uh, just to let you know that if you put a value here for Y. Or Z, it's going to change the position of this system line. But at the moment, just leave it this one here by default. Under naming, all right, the way the the the, the way how advanced still works is that you you don't need to to worry about uh, numbering. So once you get your model finished. All right, you just press numbering and it's going to assign, it's going to give uh, part marks to different objects. So de depending on uh, if it's a beam or it's a column, it's going to assign those. If, if it's a single part and main part, it's going to recognize that. Man, see, 
So it's going to assign those part marks to your object. So never change and never put something here manually. All right? Advanced seal will, will actually take care of that. A model role. Under model role, you have to check this. Uh, you have to specify the model role. So you have, uh, depending on what you have here, you need to pick, let's say, column here. Column. Because uh, the way advanced steel uh, generates drawings is related to these model roles. So, especially for beams and columns, you have to specify that model role. All right, and never check this box. All right, because it's gonna it's gonna affect your your numbering. All right, so let's say. You have a column with column. You have a column with the uh, with the column here specified, and you have another column with the same size, with the same thing, but with something else like curved beam or some another type of model role, right? So if you have this one check, it's gonna change the 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 part marks as assigned to these two columns. So never never check this box here. So you're going to get two different columns with two different numbers. You're going to get two identical columns actually with two different part marks if you have this one checked. So never check this. Uh, attributes User attribute, we're going to see that when, it, when, we go, when we get into drawings. Display type, we're going to see that. Behavior, on the behavior, it's, uh, we've got these two options, use for numbering, use for, for list. If it's an existing column, you need to uncheck these, uh, these boxes, and it won't be part of your drawings. And your list used for collision checked and a structural member. The same thing, we're going to see that. Properties, uh, member, member property like gauge line, like uh, thickness of web thickness and flange thickness, and the, the column height, which is 10 feet. All right. Design forces, engineering stuff. If you want to calculate uh, the connection with advanced steel, you need to have these these guys. Uh, you need to put something here. Camber properties. If it's a camber beam, you need to check these and uh, specify the the first start, the starting and end offset. All right, at the moment it's not taped, it's not campered. I'm gonna uncheck that. So, that's for members. The same thing for beams. We don't have uh, a separate command and different command for beams. We use the same thing for beams, all right? So just, we put it we, we select the command and pick between two points. All right. I pick two points. It brings up this, uh, this box. The only difference is that you need to change this model role to beam. All right. And under positioning, it's better to put it to middle top because it's better when it comes to connect to making connection. All right? That's the only difference. The other parts are the same. So this is a little frame. One more thing. Let's say 
you you want to get this immediate top and this beam for model roll always set and you don't want to go through these tabs and change these these uh, these these values every time that you put in a piece of steel if you want to do that you once you put in a piece of steel all right if you're happy with this the with the parameters that you have set you can right click on the blue area on the top of, of the dialog box all right and check let's say I'm uh, on the positioning tab check the positioning tab here all right the same thing for naming right click here and check this model role because I, I want to get this model role for the next piece of slate put in all right I just close the, the, the dollar box so if I have this column copy here right we're going to see how to copy different objects but at the moment if I want to create a create a beam between these two columns again click here and here and you can see here I've got my I've got everything set like beam I have this beam and this middle top already set all right so you can use this little trick to to make this work a little bit easier all right any questions Guys, um, so it it doesn't recognize what it's going into immediately. I see I'm going right to my work point, which is where I selected it to. I guess if you zoom up there, where your beam's going into your column. I see that the flange is running inside. You're talking about this. This. Yeah. It doesn't matter when we, when we create connections. Okay. When we make connections, advanced steel will take care of that. All right. Mm -hmm. Advanced steel will cut and we we'll shorten this beam, and it's going to take care of that. Don't worry about that. Just create your beams between two. Uh, two lines that which which are actually okay. the, the system lines. Create create your members between from system line to system line, and don't worry about this uh, interference interference between the beam, okay. the beam and the collar. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes, four minutes, five minutes to, to practice putting some piece of steel, play with these uh, good lines, uh, with these commands, stream and delete, and this one here, single axis, and uh, when I'm back, I'm going to check I'm going to make you guys present it to see how everybody's going, okay? Yeah. 
Jago. Yeah. So, how, is that is that a speaker? Yeah, there is a speaker. Oh, you still like as well? Is there still a tutorial if you need to do this? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. Let's start with, with Dave. All right, Dave. Any questions? Uh, I guess not. Okay. I'm going to go to to Dragomir. Um. Can you can you share your screen, Drago? I just lost my screen. I'm going to go to Jason at, in the meantime. I'll go back to you. Okay. Okay, Jason, any, any questions? No, I'm okay. All right. Drago? Yeah, I, I don't have my screen, you know, where everybody else has got screen and I don't have it. Yeah, I've seen what the other guy's done. And All right, so what do you mean by you don't well, have? Right, um, I just have a, a right end of the screen, you know, like uh, showing me that, uh, okay, maybe I should start something, hold on a second. Uh, you know, like uh, there is a... Uh, uh, there is a screen sharing. Uh, okay, uh, I see your screen now. Uh, okay. Just uh, can you just go to advanced steel? Because I think it's on your other screen. I think. Hold on a second. Uh, it says connected to go to the training. Uh, that's that's not the one. No, no, no. Um, just close this. You don't have. You don't need to go. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Do you have advanced seal open or not? No. Okay. So that's why. Okay. Because oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I should have had uh, advanced seal open uh, in order to to draw there and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I don't have that. Okay. So you actually, when I give this training, I want you guys to do the same thing on your side because. Uh, otherwise, you you're gonna forget everything that I give here, and it's uh, it's hard to remember what I what we're talking about right now afterwards. If you want to do that on your site, sure. 
make my surprise there. Share my screen. Yeah, I see your screen now. Okay. So, uh, all right, so I'm gonna, so the same, the same rule applies for other sections, channel and sections, any, everything. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to copy different, different members in advanced steel. So you can select the, the, the object you want to copy and type CO for copy, enter, select the first point, and select the destination point. All right? This command applies to members, not to connections. So for connections, we have uh, another command. All right, so just if you want to copy advanced members and objects, you can use copy or move. So for copy, you can type C or, enter, select the object, enter, and copy that to different locations. All right. To delete, uh, to delete an object, you need to select that and hit delete. All right. So the same thing for move. M O for move. Enter. Oops. M for move. Enter. Select the, the column or beam, and the same thing, just move it around to, to a new position. All right, so now uh, I, I want to, we're going to see to get a ma the match property command, all right? So let's say I change my member size to something bigger. We're smaller, like uh, let's say David 12 by 14 by 40. All right. So I want to, I can do the same thing. I can double click here and change my member size, or I can use match property. MA for match, match properties. Enter. Select the, uh, the main member. Select the, the, the one you want to change. All right, it's going to change this member. Now I have W12 by 40. All right, so it's like AutoCAD. If you are familiar with AutoCAD, you, you have no trouble using it. Uh, uh, okay, so Tapered beam, uh, it's just a tapered beam, tapered sections, the same thing. It's a very uh, big topic. I'm not going to get into that, but you've got different, a bunch of settings, set up items to set for tapered, for tapered members. Okay, can I interrupt you a moment? If I yeah. go to match match properties, mm -hmm. hit enter, select, am I doing this wrong? Select my column. Mm -hmm. uh, it still comes up as a 1226, which is, which is what, what I originally had. I changed my other one to a 1240. Okay. So do I need to click on it first and then on the other one? Okay, let's say, okay, I'm going to show you again. I've got this one double tool by 19. Okay. okay. I want to do the same. I want to have the same thing here. So I just mm -hmm. do M A enter. I pick my column. Okay. Okay. But I just pick, I don't do enter, right? 
Okay. And select, select the other one. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So this is for match properties. So, so copy moved. So let's say you want to change the the members the member length. My column height. You select the column and pick this grip here and go towards the direction you want. Let's say it's it's not it. I want it to be 15 feet instead of 10, so I put 5, all right? I want to add 5 extra feet. I just put 5, and now I've got 15 feet column, all right? You can see here 15 feet column, all right? Now let's take a look at these commands here we have on the uh, on the on the on the tool palette, on the second tab, we have tools. All right, and we've got this advanced trim and extend. All right. Okay. Just you can use this command as well to trim and extend your members. The, of course, it's easier to just pick this column, and just. Uh, make it shorter, but you can always use these commands here to trim and extend your members. Let's say, select the command. I want to trim this column. All right, I want to make it shorter. So I type T for trim. So you have three options, trim, extend, and auto. So I put T for trim, enter. System, center, and face. If you pick system, it's going to trim this column uh, actually uh, from this system line here. All right? So I put it. We have, we have by default system selected. I do enter. Select my uh, actually object. And select the other object. Oops, I didn't select them right. Trim, system. So you can use this command. So you need to select the the boundary first, and then the object you wanna you wanna trim. All right. This one is uh, this this one becomes handy if you have a diagonal if you have a diagonal member. And let's say, hmm, I have a, you have a member, you want to just uh, extend your member. Uh, you want to get two members connected to each other, but you don't know the, the, the spacing, and you can use this command. All right. So, uh, I'm going to go back to to my I section. So we have this one here, which is a, which is a folded beam. This command is, a, is also helpful, especially when it comes to creating a new section or if you have a, uh, you have a, Geometry, you have a complicated geometry, you can create your geometry using this command. The way how it works is you can create your shape, your 2D geometry. Let's say we're going to see that, I think, because I, I need to show you how to work with UCS, all right, because it's related to UCS. And then I'm going to show you that tomorrow. But other than this role section, I think, okay, we've got this uh, beam from line. We have a very handy command, beam from line. 
So what it does is it's going to create a beam from a line. So if you have a 2D geometry, 2D drawings, if you have a 2D drawing or something like this, you can in import it into advanced steel and you can uh, turn them into beams. So the way how it works is, let's say I want to create a, uh, uh, we have this curved beam as well, but I'm going to show you this. It, this one is easier, I think, using this, uh, this beam from line command. Uh, in this case, just uh, check this box, check this snap. Let's say I want to create a uh, beam, right? I want to create a beam from this semicircle. This is going to be my beam. This is my center line, center line of my beam. Use this command, beam from line, and I pick the line, just that. You're going to get the you're going to get a message on the command line to, to, to select, to, to delete the, the line, your reference line. I do yes, and it brings up this teller box. It's the same thing. It's, it's exactly the same teller box as we saw together for uh, I sections. So it's just a... a different different way of creating your members all right so you can use the same you can use this command it's it, it does the same job but you need to pick first point second point and you it depends on your radius all right it's going to create your uh, your curved beam. All right. So now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is actually uh, beam feature. All right. So the beam feature. The advanced seal we call them beam feature, but it's not actually beam feature. It's uh, we can say that the the tools for beam modifications. So let's say you want to uh, shorten your beam or your column. You want to get some cut, some contour, some holes on your beam, on your flange, on your web. You need to use these commands. We have a bunch of automated connections in advanced steel, and we're going to see them on the third day. So most of the time, we don't have to use these manual commands to modify your beams because advanced steel will create those automated connections automatically. But sometimes you have a connection which doesn't exist within this dollar bar, within this connection vault and you are actually, uh, you, you have to use these commands to, to modify your, your members. So now I'm going to just copy one of these beams here, uh, change my presentation. I'm going to get rid of my snap. When you work on 2D geometries like lines, you want to create a line or polyline or something like this, you can have the, your, those snaps, all of those snaps checked. But when it comes to 3D, it's better to have them unchecked. All right? So, so let's take a look at these tools we have here. Shorten at UCS. We're going to see that tomorrow because uh, or at the end of this session, I am going to go through UCS, but at the moment, let's start with easier ones. 
with this one, bevel cut. This one is a, it's a new command available with Advanced Steel 2014. Uh, we had bevel cut, we had bevel cut available with 2013, but not for beams, just for, for plates. But in this version, we have this uh, bevel cut available. So what it does is just you pick the command, and you pick the, the, the beam. And what it does is it's going to create a, a bevel cut on your member. So you can change it to convex, straight. You can change the x. You can change the value for x and y and angle. All right. It's pretty easy. Increment. Don't worry about that. We're going to see that increment uh, later on. But that's how it works. Just put the value for x and y and this uh, uh, angle. And if you want to create, create an offset, you can play with this start offset and end offset, let's say 5 inches and 5 inches from end and from start. So you can see here, I've got 5 inches here and the other 5 inches at, the, at my start point. All right. Now, if I, let's say, I have, I have this bit of cut on my beam, I want to mo modify that. In advanced steel, once you see your your feature, we call them feature because uh, we have this beam feature here. Okay, so if you want to modify that, just double click on the green feature that you see on your on your on your members. All right, it brings up the same dialog box, and you can modify that. If you cannot, if you're pretty sure that you have a feature on your member, but you cannot see that, that's because a different presentation type that you have selected. What I mean by that is, if I double click on my beam under display type, oops, it's a glitch. I should be able to see my, my, uh, my options. All right, I'm gonna. If I delete this. All right, I think. Region. Okay, to save your model. All right, you click on save or save as, and it's gonna save your model with a DWG extension. All right, put the name for your model. Let's say it's number one. I go to my desktop. I go to December 2nd, and I put here my first day model. Save it. All right. I'm going to put in another piece of steel. All right. I'm going to zoom in on my member, and I'm going to pick the command again. First of all, I'll make sure if I have my display type showing up, right? All right, so again, oh my god, it's, uh, it's bad. It's a bug because I'm gonna mute Dave for a second. Okay, so uh, at the moment, let just let me check something here, like uh, very fast. Uh,
if I see that. Okay. If I go here, it's fine. Okay. On your side, I want you guys to try that, okay? Once you create that, I think it's a problem we have in 2014 with Service Pack 1. If you don't have Service Pack 1 installed on your site, check this. Create a bevel cut on your member, all right? Select your member and create a bevel cut on your member. All right, and I wanted to check if you have this bevel cut placed on your beam. I want you to check if you have access to these display top commands and toggles. Do that and let me know, guys, right? Because it's a, because we have to be able to see all of these features. I do. Okay. I do. Okay, so it's it's all it's just say it's a bug in 2014 plus respect one. So the way how it works is if you wanna see, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna create another uh, feature like uh, not miter. Let's say. Uh, hmm. Shorten. We're going to see that, but at the moment, just make sure if I have. No, it's a bug. All right, guys. Uh, doesn't matter at the moment, but you, if you cannot, if you have a feature on your on your beam and your and on your objects, if you cannot see that because you have on, on, on your display type, you have standard. If you want to see your, those cut or shorten or bevel cut that you have created, you need to change your presentation type to feature, okay? Unfortunately, at the moment, I don't see that, but let's say we're going to do oh that in 2013. But you should be able to see those features because I just installed 2014 with Series Pack 1. I just installed Series Pack 1, and I didn't know this that problem. All right. So to modify this feature, if you see that, you need to just double click on that and change your parameters. If you cannot see that, that's because you 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 don't have your display type on feature. You need to change it to feature to be able to see that, right? So now if I want to see my beam with that bevel cut into that, I pick my beam, I do an orbit to see what it actually looks like. Or you can change your presentation type to, to standard to see what it actually looks like. All right, if you find this little green feature irritating, you can just change it to uh, to standard and it won't be and it will be disappeared. All right, I'm gonna go to the next uh, Corner cut, so corner cut is the same thing. It works in the same way. You pick the command, all right, and you just play with these values like, let's say half an inch and half an inch. And here, let's say eight inches. And here we've got 45. All right. So 
So to modify that, double click on that, brings up the dollar box, change the parameters. Why doesn't it know? Like when I did that, it comes up with uh, 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. So um, it's, which is way thicker than my flange. Okay, so if it's uh, if it's like that, it's because the the, the previous set of settings you have for bevel cut. Just change that. It doesn't matter. Just change that. Uh, change your values, and the next time you use this command, yeah, you're gonna I'm get gonna the, get the same. Because I'm doing something right now. The same. Uh, so that is what it was. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, minor, so if I have two beams intersecting each other like this, all right, if I have this one, like this and this one here, like that. All right. If I want to create a miter, miter, use the command. Select the first beam and the second beam. It's it's pretty important uh, where you where you click actually when you use this command because the let me show you that me feature so the good example of uh, feature here feature happens happen here let's say let's take a look at my uh, my beams I've got a feature I've got a miter on my on my beams but I cannot see that so if I cannot see that I cannot modify that to be able to modify your the, 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 the changes you you make on your on your members, you need to change the presentation type. All right, display type feature. Now, if I delete this green box, it's like a I, I delete the command. All right, so again. It's important where you click when you use this command. Select the select. I, I want to select these two parts this time. Select this. Select this. You can see that I've got two parts. Those beams that I selected disappear it now. All right. So, if I want to keep this and this, I need to pick these these two guys to to delete them. All right. So, selection order becomes important when it comes to to this command. So, again, pick the command select the first beam, the, the part I want to delete, the second part, it brings up this box, this dollar box, and I've got this miter, I can change it to saw cut flange. All right, you can see here now that I've got this one here, my my first beam got cut uh, on my flange. If I change it to web, it goes inside my inside of my my web. All right, on the cut, I've got this create create weld. If I check that, it's going to create this little cross little. Uh, this cross is my weld symbol. All right. So, whenever you see this pink cross, it means this is your weld. So I have my weld thickness. 
And if I want to create a gap between my two beams, you can put a value here. Library, you can save it. I'm not going to do that. We're going to see this library when, when we start talking about connections. I couldn't get mine to uh, Falcon. Sorry, Dave, say that again. I just couldn't get my beams to miter like you were talking. Okay, make you presenter. Can you can you share your screen? Yep. Okay. Can you do an orbit first? Because I want to make sure if you have your beams at the same plane. Okay. Go go for it. Okay, good. Okay, so miter. Mm -hmm. So I pick the part I don't want. Okay. Enter. Do enter. Select the other part. Enter. Oh, enter. Yeah. Okay. All right. I wasn't pushing enter. Okay. All right. Thanks. Pleasure. All right, guys. Uh, so now I've got this uh, connection here, a little connection, because I have these these beams connected to each other by this uh, weld. So I can we can consider that as a connection. Uh, if I want to go back to to my dollar box to change my parameters. If I double click on this box, it it won't go to to the dollar box because it's not because it's just a feature. It's just a part of the, of the of a connection called miter beam. All right. So there's a difference between a feature and a connection. Whenever you create a connection, when you have two two of your objects connected to each other using a weld symbol or some bolts or something like this. You, if you want to go back to the dollar box and change your parameters, you need to select any part of this connection, whether this uh, little weld or this uh, green box, doesn't really matter. I pick this. Right click on that instead of double click on that. This time you need to right click on that and go to advanced joint properties. Alright, so it brings up the box that we, the, 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 the initial box that we uh, actually put or parameters. Alright, so if I, let, I'm going to show you something because it's not part of this session but just to to make this a little bit clearer because I see some people having trouble uh, understanding the difference between a feature and a connection. So let's say I've got this uh, beam and column I want to create a connection. Don't worry about this connection. We're going to see that. All right. Uh, let's say I want to create a clip angle. Oops. All right. So this is a connection. All right. So I have this plate, this clip angle with these bolts, and just let me change one of these guys to to really connection. All right, so I've got this connection. All right, I've got this weld, and 
I got these uh, angles which are connected to this beam by this weld and which they are connected to this column using these bolts. This is a connection, all right? If I want to modify that, I need to select any part of this connection, whether it's a weld or a bolt or a cube angle, all right? Right-click on that and go to Advanced Joint Properties. If I right double-click on this, uh, this weld, it goes to weld uh, dollar box, not to the connection. All right? So that's the difference between a connection and a feature. So if I want to see my features on this beam, You can see here, there's a feature here. There is a, there is a shortening here, all right? And advanced steel, it, this shortening here is created automatically by advanced steel. So if I want to go to this, to this shortening, I can't double click on that, but you can see everything is gray out, all right? You cannot change it because it's part of my connection. And it's managed by the dollar box that uh, actually that is called clip angle connection box, All right? So you cannot change them individually and manually because this is, these are all part of a connection. So like here, all right, here we have a connection and if you want these parts to be changeable, Manually, you need to get rid of this box, all right? This connection box. This box, whenever you see this box, this gray box, it means that it's, a, it's, a, it's an intelligent connection and you have a bunch of objects connected to each other working as a group, all right? So if you want to, let's say, modify this connection manually, all right, you want to modify something. First of all, you have a bunch of parameters within the dollar box you can play with to modify this connection. We're going to see that, but let's say you want to modify this manually, all right? You cannot use these features that we saw together. You cannot apply these commands to a connection. If you want to apply these commands to this connection, you need to delete this box, all right? And then they all, these, these, these parts become uh, individual objects and then you can modify them using these commands, all right? So because at the moment, if I, if you use these commands, it, it eventually, you're going to get a message like it's, it doesn't work this command with this connection because this is part of the connection. All right. Another thing is when it comes to connections, you have a group of objects. So if you like exactly like grid lines, like ax, like you, you couldn't pick one of those axes and delete that. You, sh you actually, you need to use this delete axis. All right. The same thing, the same rule applies here. If I pick this weld symbol and if I hit delete, all right, it's going to delete my connection. All right, the same thing here. If I pick this weld and if I hit delete, it's going to it's going to delete all of everything. It's going to delete my bolts, my clip angles, everything. Because they are connected to each other as a group, working as a connection. So if you want to modify a connection manually, you need to delete this box, all right? Not this connection is no longer an intelligent connection. So what I mean by that is you can pick these welds and delete them, right? And nothing happens. You still have your clip angle and your your bolts. You can pick this group of bolts. We can make them individual, but at the moment, just you can delete them. You can 
put some uh, you can use these commands to to create some uh, uh, some features on on your on your members all right you can use this hold on a second all right but in order but again you can do that only if you have a if you have individual objects all right so I'm gonna go back to to the topic so it's important to, to understand the difference between a connection and a feature feature is just a part of a connection all right a little part of a connection so now if I let's say uh, I'm happy with this connection with this uh, another thing if you want to go back if you want to modify this connection all right it's a connection because we have this gray box all right you have you can either select any part of connection and go to advanced joint properties or you can double click on this box and go to the same dollar box All right. If you want to delete the connection, all right, perfectly, you want to delete, and you don't. You don't have to. When you have a connection, all right, you don't have to create a. You don't have to make a window to, to 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 delete your parts. You just need to select any part of your connection and hit delete. All right. Like here, if I pick this one and hit delete, it's going to delete all of my parts. I don't have too many parts. I've got just two parts, but if you have a bunch of valves and bolts, it's hard to, to select them individually, one by one, and delete them. So whenever you have this box, it means you have a group of objects. So you can, they, they work as a group. So if you delete one part, it's going to delete all of, all of the other parts. All right, so I'm going to just uh, delete this feature and gonna keep going. All right, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, so we saw this and this and this. We, we have this cutted object. It's pretty much the same as uh, MITER, but that's just different uh, uh, we're going to see that. Click on that. All right. Select the continuous beam. All right. You want the one you you don't want to get you don't want to get cut you don't want to cut. Select enter. And now you need to select the one you want to cut. So depending on which part you want to cut, you pick the. Uh, you pick your, your actually your beam. Now it brings up this box, and it's the same thing. My there, cut, flange, cut, web, just. Uh, uh, the only thing we have here is just this front and rear part, and we have actually these. This, uh, if, it, if it's a uh, if it's a diagonal beam, you you can actually uh, check this box to to get to get it right and straight. All right, so I'm gonna go to rectangular contour. So here, if you want to use these commands, all right, you need to change your UCS. Your UCS position is pretty important when it comes to these commands. Now we're going to see UCS, all right? So I click on UCS tab here, the, f the fourth one from the top, the middle one actually. Uh, no, not the middle one, the fourth one from the top, the fifth one from the bottom. 
So we have UCS world. So it's it's the it's actually the default location, all right. And this default location uh, is accessible whenever you change your UCS and you want to go back to the default location. You click here and it's done. For example, I'm going to move my UCS. I'm going to put it right here. I want to go to the default location. I click here. It goes to default location. It's going to change the direction of your uh, uh, axis and the, the, the location of your axis. Uses three points. This one is pretty handy, especially if you have if you're working on something diagonal. Uses view. We're going to see this. Uses view. We're going to see this when we go when we when, when we start draw, uh, making drawings. Uses that object. Click on that. You pick your objects. Whether it's a plate or beam. Let's say I want to put my uses right here. All right. When you click your object, it's going to ask you for for uh, for the z direction. Right. If I whenever you click, it's going to be your z direction. If I want to have my z like here down right here, we pick this one. And it's going to calculate the, the direction and the, the, the position of two other directions for x and y. All right. So again, click on that. Pick this, uh, pick this beam here. I want, I, I want to have my z in up like here. I click and it's going to create my two other, it's going to rotate my two other directions. Use this at curve beam. If you have a curve beam, like here, you can use this command. All right? Because if you have a feature, if you want to create this, create something on, create a, create a hole or something on your curve beam, you need to have your UCS align with the curve, with your beam. All right. So if if you have a curved beam, use this. Don't worry about that. We're gonna see that. Move your UCS. Okay. Move UCS is is uh, is used when you wanna just move your UCS. I'm gonna move my UCS right here. But something here is important. It's not gonna change your the direction of your uh, and the rotation and the position of your, uh, the rotation actually of your uh, axis, all right? So if you have your Z and your Y like this, when you move it, it's just going to move the, the point, the position of your UCS, not the, the rotation of your UCS. So you can change it to world and then use this command. You view on UCS, and we're going to see these guys when we uh, start talking about drawings. We have this rotate UCS around X, Y, and Z. What it does is, let's say I want to rotate my UCS around X. All right. What it does is it's going to keep your X stationary and it's going to rotate your two other directions. Every time you click on that, it's going to rotate to your two other directions by 90 degree. Okay? So click on that. You can see here my X is stay the same. My is stay the same. Okay? But I've got two other directions changing. So the same thing for these guys. Uh, you can do the same thing for uh, you can do the same thing using a, a shortcut command. So if I type UCS, all right, uh, we have object here, all right. We have three points which is this one here. We have face, which is not 
uh, pretty handy in advanced seal because we have objects. We have delete. Don't don't worry about that. Don't use it. Object. It's the same as uh, move UCS. All right. If I hit O for object, all right, I can move my UCS here. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. So you can instead of if you are if you are working on your uh, tool palette on beam feature and you don't want to go back to, to UCS and you don't want to lose these these tools here you can type your UCS and use the shortcut commands so instead of you going here you can just put, type objects and just move your UCS alright UCS objects alright the other thing which is pretty handy is that uh, you can put a negative value when you use this command. But if you use this UCS command, it's going to rotate your UCS by 90 degree automatically. So, but here you can just type, for example, if I want to rotate my UCS around X, I type X, enter, and I have 90 degree. I can put minus 90 degree, or I can just put 90 degree. All right. Click on that. We've got UCS previews. So if I want to go back to the previous location, I just type P for previews. It goes to the previous location. All right. So again, UCS. So previous location, pretty handy. And if you want to use these guys, view is the same as UCS at view. But I think these three uh, commands are more important. This one, uh, previews as well, and object. So again, around X, enter, you can put minus 90 degree. You can see how it changes. All right, use this previews. So, now let's see why UCS is important. It's because if I if I want to create a if I want to create a uh, rectangular contour on the web of my beam, all right, I need to have my X and Y aligned with the with the web of my beam, all right. So. I need to rotate my UCS around X for 90 degree. UCS, X, and 90 degree. No matter if you have your UCS on top of your flange. What it matters is, uh, what matters is that you have your UCS aligned with the work plane you want to work on. All right, so use this command, rectangular contour with center. So what it does is it's going to, you can create a line, for example, reference line or something like this. All right, and you can actually, if I want to if I want to create a create something here, create a contour box here uh, on my web, use this command, select my call my beam, right, and I pick the point. It's going to be the center of my contour. But again, you have you need to have your x and y aligned with the work line, uh, with the work plane you're working on. All right. Uh, this one with two points, it does the same thing, but just instead of selecting your center point, you can pick two points. All right, like. 
like this. You can change the, the width and your length. Let's say five by eight. All right, length increment, don't worry about that. This length is not actually the length of your, uh, of your box. It's just the length increment, and we're going to see that. Positioning, the same thing, contour. If you want to get the, if you want to have a gap or something, you can just put, put the value here. Corner finish, say half an inch. For corner, for corner finish. This is what I actually have. If I go to realistic, you see what it actually looks like. All right, so if I want to modify this beam, not this beam, but these features, these boxes, first of all, I need to see them to be able to pick them, right? To see them again, make sure you have this, this display, display type on features, and then so let the bell click on them and pick and play with these values. All right. So I'm going to go to this one here to circular one. It's, it works exactly in the same way, but just it's going to create something. Well, let's say delete this, change my, uh -huh. select my beam and pick my reference line. It's going to do the same thing, but it's going to create a circle, all right, and you need change the radius of the circle to to change this little circle all right so the same thing for this one with two points we have polygon contours so let's say you don't have a box and your geometry is, is more complex let's say you have a uh, if you have something odd or you have a complex geometry you want to create a hole from on your on your members to do that first of all you need to create that geometry all right or you can you can import that geometry from from another software or you if you ha if you can create that right here i'm going to create something like Let's say I have this geometry, and I want to use a, I want to create a contour from this uh, to the geometry. All right. So to do that, you you need to use this command, polygon contour. Click on that. Select the beam. All right. And now take a look at the command line, asking me for uh, for for my for my polyline, so I can create a polyline right here, but it's better if you create that before you use this command. All right. So now I just type P, and it's gonna enable me to select this 2D geometry. All right. So select, enter. And it brings up this dollar box. All right, I can same thing. Can create a gap, or something. Corner finish. Corner finish. I can check these boxes. And put a value. It's a little bit. Uh, you need to just play with these uh, corners to find your your desired corners where you want to create a radius or chamfer, all right? So the number four is here, number three maybe here, uh, or here, I'm not sure. 
You can try that. All right. So you can delete your reference geometry. Uh, this is going to be the last command we see today, element contour. Element contour is used to, to actually, to create a contour. Uh, if you have two beams, two objects connected to each other. So what I mean by that is, if I come in here, if I create some pipe, let's say I've got this little uh, uh, pipe, all right? I create this pipe. I'm going to move it by by certain values, like three inches, something. All right. I have this. I want to copy that by five or ten inches. Ten inches. Twenty inches. Thirty inches. So I've got the shape like this. I got three, four pipes coming through my beam, and I want to create those. Uh, I want to create a hole here where I have these pipes connecting, connected to my uh, to my beam. All right. So use this command, element contour at UCS. So I pick the command. All right, and select the, take a look at the command line, select the object to be modified. Select the beam, all right. Now select my object. This one, you can see. I've got this little circle here and this little contour here. If I want to pick them all, all right, if I want to pick all of my pipes at once, instead of using this command, you need to use this command. All right, sorry, this one here, element contour rule. Select the command, click the beam, enter, select, select, Select all of them and enter. Don't worry about this uh, shortening here. If you want to see your, your beam, you need to come in here to parameters and uncheck this create shortening. All right? Once you uncheck this, you get this. You get it right. And now I have my beam actually with these holes. All right. Uh, okay, the last thing is going to be this one, short, shorten at UCS. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these guys. <laughs> And show you guys this command here. Shorten it UCS. Okay. So what it does is uh, short. First of all, I'm gonna show you shorten. Delete this. So we have we have this shorten here. Just click, and it's gonna uh, shorten your your beam. Put the value. Nothing complicated. Delete. Uh, don't worry about these guys. We saw this. We're going to see these guys uh, tomorrow. All right. Let's see this one here. 
shorten it to UCS. So what it does is it's all about your UCS. So for example, you have uh, you create some uh, let's say you create some uh, mm, some reference line like uh, five inches maybe and all right if I if I wanna shorten my beam okay by this angle I need to use this command but first of all I need to position my UCS aligned with this uh, angle using three points all right UCS at three points this one is I think the, the best choice to, to position your UCS on a diagonal uh, a line, select my first point is going to be in this point you need to select you need to check your end point okay because you have to position your uses you need to select your X and Y direction so use the command from here to here. So you see my I've got my Y aligned with this line. All right. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use this command. And you can see here I've got my object, my beam, shortened according to this, uh, to, to my UCS. All right, so it's all about your UCS. If you want to get a cut like this, you want to get the shortening like this, you need to place your UCS on the member and use this command. So, shorten at UCS is used for for command like for a situation like this. And uh, so, once more, I have nothing. I, I'm done with my topic. We're gonna see these guys tomorrow, and these plate features tomorrow. We're gonna take a look at plate plates. We're going to create some plates and then we, we're going to use this command modifying those plates, creating some holes, making some changes in those plates. All right. At, now I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to, to practice and uh, go back to your screen to see how everybody's doing. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah.
start with with Dave. Great, Dave. You're doing good. Okay. You have your uses place. You just need to use the the command the the beam feature to to actually shorten your beam. Oh, all right. So that would be on, on the beam feature. Let's go down. Did the last one, yeah. And the first one, very top, very top one. Okay. You, yeah. There you go. Identify the object. Just click, and it's gonna do the job. Enter. Okay. Okay, great. So, do you have any any questions? Um, I. I guess not. Did you did you try uh, using um, all of the commands we saw together? Well, I did, and I kind of got lost a little bit. I, I mean, mm -hmm. let's see. If I want to connect this beam to this beam right mm -hmm. here with, it, say, a clip angle, mm -hmm. um, I was. No, don't worry about that. That clip angle, we're gonna see that together. Okay. It was just an example. Okay. Oh, okay. I yeah. All right. I just want just wanted to give you an idea. What is the what is a connection? What a connection is, and what is the difference between a connection and a, and a feature. feature? All right. Okay. We're gonna see that together. Don't worry about that clip angle. All right. Just work with these features, and place some features on on your beam. Okay. Uh, uh, f for features, do you have any questions? Um, no, no, I'm good. Sure. Yeah. Go to Drago. Uh, Drago, do you have advanced seal uh, open? Uh, no, Drago. I guess not. Not yet. You know, I'll wait for the session to do. To finish it, then I'll go on it. We we go through the whole thing. Okay, can you, okay. So, all right. Yeah, you can skip me. Okay. Okay, Jason. Let's do. Okay. Some, some feature. Okay. Well, I was doing them as I was going along with you and deleting them as I was. I don't really have anything on there right now. Okay. <clears throat> but I was I was getting it okay. I wasn't having any trouble. Okay, great. Any any specific questions? Um, not one related to this, but some my boss asked me to ask you something. I was wondering if I could ask that real quick. Uh, uh okay. Let's go. Okay. Just real fast. Okay. Is there a view cube in in advanced CAD or advanced steel? Is there a view cube? View cube. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm assuming it's some kind of AutoCAD thing that he he wanted me to ask about. If I believe it's at the top left, isn't it? Where you say top and side and all that. No, that's that's not what Greg's asking for. So if you if it's if it doesn't have one, that's okay. I just he just wanted me to ask real quick. So okay, just I don't know what the view. What do you okay, mean by that's it? fine. Okay, I I I don't know either. So, um, okay, if you don't know, then it it probably isn't. So no worries. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Do you, do you have? No, I'm I'm okay. Okay. Did you try using the, these commands? You're fine. I did. Yeah, yeah. I was doing them as you were going along. I I did them all, but I was deleting them as you were deleting them too. So. Okay, that's great. But, okay. Yeah, I I don't have any trouble. Okay, great. Okay, guys, I I'm done with with my today's topic, and I'm gonna send you uh, the 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 invitation link for for tomorrow, 
and talk to you tomorrow at the same time, okay? Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Yeah, you, you too. too.